Things First is sponsored by Gillette, the best a man can get. What is happening here? You comfortable? I am. Hi, everyone. I... Welcome to Monday. Welcome Far to First Things First. Far more comfortable than someone else. Welcome to the show where CC and I are quite comfortable. I'm Jenna Wolf. That is the Hall of Famer, Chris Carter. This is Nick Wright. Our... Where'd you get those shoes, Chris Carter? Uh, the Kraft family sent them to a holiday gift. Thank you, Mr. Kraft. As you delivered not only for the holidays, you're still delivering in Kansas City. <laughs> Thank you for your shoes. These are his custom-made Air Force Ones. Nike makes for him. Whoa, He's Patriot a Patriot logo. Nine Super Bowls. I mean, I mean, if winning is a thing... <laughs> I we'll like your shoes. Good morning, bro. Good morning to both of you. Pleasant weekend. Weekend. One Good of the weekend. worst of my life. Okay. <laughs> well, let's just go ahead and talk sports. <laughs> it was an amazing weekend, though. Yep. Wait in the know NFL. Your partners. <laughs> yeah. Pleasant yeah. weekend. You oh, have to I mean. acknowledge there were two great games, though. It was a great way. Oh, for it was fantastic. Conference it was Sunday. Just to go. delightful. All right. well, you know what? Let's just start with the AFC Championship <laughs> game and get right to it. Chiefs hosting the Patriots. Chiefs basically were. Shut out in the first half, not basically, but made it a game in the second. A little more than two minutes to go. Damian Williams runs it in to put the Chiefs up four. Mahomes fired up, but so was Tom Brady. When he's fired up, he does things like this. Finds Gronk, putting the ball inside the five. Less than a minute to play. Next play, Rex Burkhead runs it in for the score. Patriots go up three. Chiefs have a chance to tie. Mahomes drops back, looking Finds Demarcus Robinson, 27-yard gain, and that would put them in range for Harrison Butker, 39 yards out. Nails it. We're going to overtime. In OT, third and nine, Tom Brady to Julian Edelman. What else is new? 20-yard gain. It's a catch. Pats into the red zone. Burkhead takes it down to the five right here. Two plays later, it's Burkhead again. He's in for the score, and that's your game. Chiefs never touch the ball in overtime. Patriots win it 37-31. Tom Brady takes down the presumptive MVP on the way to his ninth Super Bowl. Here is the quarterback after the game. The odds were stacked against us, and it hasn't been that way for us for a while, and it certainly was this year. Great way to end it. I was probably as excited as I've been in a long time. And, uh, you know, a lot of things, one play here, one play there, could have changed everything, but that's football. And just proud of our team. RTC, there's a lot of reasons why the Patriots won this game. Was it the quarterback? Was it the coach? Was it the defense? Was it the run game? How do you think the Patriots were able to beat Kansas City last night? Well, it wasn't the quarterback. Tom Brady was big in the most critical situations, but in spite of him, and regardless of what you want to say, Tom Brady's resume, it, it's great. But there's also been no quarterback that's been supported by, supported by support staff. That being coaching, that being defensive plays, that being every time New England gets in a critical situation, you might not know who it is, but you can believe that a player is going to step up and be able to make a play. Hogan making plays, Edelman making plays, Gronk. Gronk makes a play running the slant on Eric Berry, a play they hadn't run all season, something they didn't game plan for, something they put in on the field. So... Tom Brady, yes, was great. Three third down conversions of third and 10 on that last drive, making the best of it. But Josh McDaniels in continuing, even the morning of the game yesterday, they put in eight new plays at the hotel, walked through them in the ballroom, ran four or five of the plays during the game, all of these for positive um, gains during the game. The play they ran to Grunk, it was something they hadn't run all season. They noticed that Eric Berry was playing outside shoulder and bump and run when they ran the fade on him earlier that Gronk made an amazing catch. Brady made a great throw. So they put in a slant pattern that they hadn't run or hadn't, hadn't, hadn't planned for. So New England's ability to be able to adapt to what's going on to put their players in a winning situation more so than couldn't find Tyreek Hill because they couldn't come up with a play compared to what New England does year in, year out, game in, game out. If you give them enough information, they'll figure out what to do, even if they haven't practiced it. To me, this was the best Belichick game since Pat's Rams that started this whole damn thing. And now we're about to get Pat's Rams and near the end of this whole thing. What they did in the on the first drive, they started the game with a 15-play drive, taking up eight-plus minutes 
just running down the Chiefs' throats. They ended the game with a 13-play drive. And what they did in between, eliminating Tyreek Hill. We said we know that going into each game, Belichick wants to try to eliminate the team's his opposition's number one option. I don't think anyone thought he was going to be able to fully eliminate Tyreek Hill. But he did. We knew they would try to minimize his impact after he had a buck 40 and three scores in the game in Gillette. Tyreek Hill made one catch. We thought they couldn't eliminate Hill and Kelsey. Kelsey, he had the one touchdown that was huge to begin the second half, but he had three catches on the game. What they schematically did to Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes was pressured on 45% of his dropbacks. The Chiefs had the ball for 21 minutes. It, it is a, a almost sports miracle that the Chiefs were in position with a lead late twice in this football game. The way it up started. 21 17 up 28 24 they were in position multiple times to win but what the pats did in the first half was magnificent it was as thorough of a coaching job as anyone can do and let's not forget how the first half ended the the patriots were only up seven nothing they seemed content to go into halftime seven nothing they were running the ball letting the clock wind down andy reed did what i think Every coach in the league would have done. You get a stop on second down, they're in third and long, call timeout. And as soon as they did that, the Patriots went into attack mode. They ended up tacking on a touchdown before the half. They ended up almost tacked on more after the Mahomes fumble near the end, right on the very final few seconds of the first half. And that 14 point deficit, it's very similar first time around. Chiefs down 15 first time around, score 31 mm -hmm. in the second half, not quite enough. Down 14 this time around, score 31 in the second half, not quite quite enough and then you left the door open for Brady to be after being really shaky for three and a half quarters really great on the final two drives of the game at, at the place where he is always or generally really really great so this Patriots team they ran they had more rushing attempts in this game than they've ever had since 2005 do you think that was the game plan coming in or were they looking at what this Chiefs defense was giving them and saying well we're just gonna run white and Michelle and see where it takes us and keep going uh, New England knows their strengths, but it's more important they know their weaknesses. Coming into this game, Kansas City giving up five yards a carry during the regular season. You know that New England, very, very predictable. As far as last week, we talked about James Devlin, the fullback, Sony Michelle, when they're on the field together. They went right with the script. When they were on the field together, Sony Michelle, James Devlin, the fullback, they ran the ball 85% of the time. So what New England did in this game was, man, they didn't try to hide what they were trying to do. They knew they wanted to be physical. I said this would be an 80s, 90s Bill Parcells type game where they would try to eat up the clock, impose their physicality on you because people watching the NFL, we don't give New England credit for having the great offensive line. Dante Scarnecchia, he's been there, I think, 17 of the 19 years that Bill Belichick has been there. His offensive line play tremendous so that ability to be able to dominate and predictably dominate from formations that was one of the big differences James White he dominated in the first quarter I mean first half even though he only played 12 snaps six first downs man and their ability to utilize their players in the right spots that to me was the difference in the football game they knew what they wanted to do they knew they had to eat up the time of possession and I have been saying this all year to anyone who wants to listen. You cannot win a Super Bowl with the bad defense that the Chiefs had. And New England went to taking that defense apart. Now, it was just enough to be able to get the game into overtime. But it's hard to win in the NFL when you can't stop the run. Chiefs couldn't do it all year. Couldn't do it yesterday. And that is what cost them the game. But with the defense the way it was, with the game the way it went, down 14 nothing. The biggest play of the game might have been calling heads, not tails. Because I don't think anyone at this desk thinks that if the Chiefs win the toss, we're not talking about this game in the exact opposite fashion. It felt to me like whoever won that coin toss was going to drive down and win the football game. To Brady's credit, he's played in, and the Pats have played in three overtime playoff games. They are three famous games. The Tuck Rule, the Atlanta Super Bowl, and last night. All three games. They won the toss, and all three games, they never let the opponent touch the football. And why? Because they know exactly what they want to do. They go from being conservative to being very aggressive, and they took control of the football game. They don't.
very, very strategic. And guys made plays when they have to in all three of those situations with the Raiders, against yep. the Falcons, and in this game against the Chiefs. And the, those third and tens, I know it says third and nine on the screen, but there was three third and tens they converted on that overtime drive. Three times where they would have, twice where they would have been forced to punt, one where they would have kicked a field goal here, where the Chiefs would have gotten the ball back. And the Achilles heel all year, the ability to get off the field and the ability to stop the run just killed them. But on the third and tens, Stopping the runs out of the equation. You know what they're doing. I don't know how Julian Edelman gets. They in became too coverage. predictable. They played two man. They came in and ran an inverted inversion to run a pick. Edelman runs the crosser at 10 to 12 yards, one of their favorite routes to run, especially in third and long. At the end of the game, the co I mean the Chiefs defense, it became too predictable. Eric Berry in bump and run on Grunk. Really? You want that matchup? New England wants that matchup. And so them being able to, Josh McDaniel, being able to predict where they were going to be to get them into the best play, that was the difference in, 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 those final, in that final drive. But a great season for the Chiefs, and our condolences only once to you. And then we move on. The Patriots are now going back to the Super Bowl. Who are they going to play? Coming up, did the referees cross the Saints?